Howdy folks, welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. There's been a lot of War Thunder lately, but don't worry, lots and lots and lots of tank action for you in today's video. These games were all played last night on Quickie Baby's livestream. I'm platooned up with Quickie Baby and Ike in this game, which was a bit of a slow starter. But we're all driving M46 patterns, and fortunately the game has spawned me up here on the hill with all the heavies, and it spawned Quickie Baby and Ike down in the valley with the medium tanks and the lights. So I'm not just isolated from the rest of my platoon. Quick look around at the map, and I'm pretty much isolated from the rest of my team as well. I'm the only one who's come up here. Pop over the ridge for a quick look, see what I can find, and there's a charioteer, but I have also been spotted. And I'm not going to hang around to take a shot at the charioteer because, well, you know what it's like if you're the first person on your team who gets spotted. Everybody suddenly stops, turns their guns around to see if they can take a shot at you, including artillery. And that's why I'm manoeuvring erratically here, because I'm just working from the assumption that since I've been spotted, especially up on this side of the map where it's very easy to be hit by artillery, that artillery is aiming at me. Turns out, I really need not bothered. Although I didn't know it at the time, and it's better safe to be sorry, but artillery leaves me alone for almost all of this game. This end of the map on Westfield, it is important if you... Well, even if you don't take it, you have to make sure the enemy team don't. But I'm not in a position to be aggressive here. There are just not enough of us up here on this reverse hill slope. There's only me and an M103 up here. Um... On the other hand, we do have some very strong tank destroyers who camped up at the back there at A3. So as long as I can keep these guys lit up, while we're not in a position to take this corner yet, we are in a position to defend it. But I have to keep illuminating that M103 for the tank destroyers behind me. The trick is, and artillery is also paying attention to that M103, but the trick is lighting them up without getting shot in the back by the enemy tanks that are pushing the hill on the other side. Now, what I do have going for me is the fact that those tanks, and I've been spotted again, do not have very good gun depression. And they really do have to expose a lot of their tank to come over that hill and take shots at me. So I'm just teasing them, basically. Here they come. Object 430 Mark II. Terrible, terrible gun depression. WZ111. Pretty bad gun depression as well. If these guys want to take shots at me, it's going to cost them. The WZ-1 in particular, terrible gun depression, terrible aiming time, and terrible accuracy. So if he wants to come over that hill to take a pot shot at me as I'm poking around here, he's going to have to spend an awful long time doing it, and it's really going to hurt him. So while this was a frustrating first three minutes of the game, I haven't taken any damage, and we've stopped the M103 from coming around. These guys haven't actually done anything. They keep popping up over this hill and trying to get shots at me, but missing. So, you know, while it is frustrating, and it was really, really annoying at the time, that we're three minutes into this bloody match and I still haven't done any damage. At the same time, if you look at the map, the enemy team completely dominate the town in the middle. But we have the flanks of the town up here and at the other end. So they're unable to exploit the advantage that they currently hold in the centre of the map. We control the flanks, they can't break out from there without taking flanking fire. So just staying alive and not taking any damage and holding on to this position, lighting up targets like the M103 and, oh, here comes a KV-3 for the tank destroyers, has, I'm not going to say it's won the game, but it's been something that somebody needed to do. So frustrating or not, even though it's not earned me any experience or credits, and that poor KV-3 just drove all the way up here to take one shot at me and it bounced and then he died. But now I'm finally in a position Oh, the WZ-111 has gotten sick and tired of not being able to take shots at me. He's come over the middle and made a perfect target of himself for those tank destroyers. And I finally get a shot into that friggin' T-54 and do some damage. But now, here we are. This is what I've been holding on for. Now I control the flank. And I'm able to start putting flanking fire in on all those guys in the centre of the town. And everybody's coming over now. This was the turning point. Whoever controls this end of the map is in a very, very, very strong position when you're on Westfield. And myself and this M103 are finally getting some payback for all the time that we spent just digging in, looking after our health, making sure we stayed alive and prevented the enemy team from getting around and doing the same to us. Because even though the enemy now still control the centre of the map, it's completely useless to them. Because they don't control the flanks. So they're getting shot at from the north, they're getting shot at from the south. Pretty much everybody in the centre is either dead or on very low health. I'm just going to manoeuvre here. That 
Those guys down at the bottom there, they had shot at me, so I'm going to use this M103 as cover. There's the T-54. Nope, Ike's got him. Ike working his way up from the south, opposite side to me. Quickie baby sweeping around. He's managed to make his way up onto the top of the hill over there as well. Looking for shots at these mediums. There goes the artillery. <laughs> Let's move forward. There they are. Come on, who are we going to shoot? Uh, turret shots on both of them. And we'll get this guy. Yep. Another good hit. Can I get another one in? I should be able to get another one in. Am I going to get the kill? No, not going to get the kill. But I at least got the full damage value out of my shell. And that was the last one. So what I initially, at least for the first three and a half minutes of the game, thought was just going to be another disaster, ended up actually not being a bad game at all. And it all happened as soon as that flank folded, and we were able to exploit it to put flank and fire in onto the enemy team in the middle of the map. Next game, Tier 8 match on Kharkov. And this time, rather than the pattern, we're all in the British Tier 8 heavy tank, the Carnarvon. Carnarvon gets a lot of criticism for being nothing more than a slower, fatter, easier to hit Centurion. And there's an element of truth in that, but the Carnarvon gets one thing that the Tier 8 Centurion medium tank doesn't get. It gets the Type B barrel version of the 20 pounder gun. Now while they're both 20 pounder guns and they both have the same penetration and damage, the Type B barrel on the Carnarvon has better accuracy, better aiming time, and a better rate of fire. And I do kind of like the Carnarvon. Even though it isn't a particularly good tank, it isn't a particularly bad tank either. Playing the Carnarvon requires a completely different style to the existing British heavy tanks up to this point. All the way up to the Black Prince, the British heavies have been very slow moving, very heavily armoured, frontline assault tanks. The Carnarvon, not so much. The side armour, that enemy Carnarvon is discovering to his cost, is absolutely terrible. The ammo rack is ridiculously weak. The lower glacis is very easily penetrated. You're probably not going to have much luck playing the Carnarvon as a frontline assault tank in the same way that you could, providing you could keep up with the action, in the other British heavies. On the other hand, the gun is very good. The gun mantlet is very strong. The rate of fire is great. The gun depression is good, and it's very, very good at firing on the move. Meanwhile, back to the battle. Quickie Baby and Ike in their Carnarvons, they're anchoring the centre of the map there, up that middle road. I was moving to try to exploit the flank opportunities around them when an enemy T-69 and Comet start doing exactly the same to us. So instead, I'm going to secure the flank, make sure these guys can't get around us, and to be fair to the team, a lot of us saw it coming and came around here to do exactly the same thing that I'm doing. T-69 still trying to put shots into that E-25, ignoring me. I'm very happy with that. I will quite happily take advantage of him trying to secure an easy kill on an E-25 in order to punch his ticket. Now, where's the Comet? I'd ignored the Comet because there was an AMX 5100 with me, but he must have been reloading because he hasn't pushed the advantage. And now he comes down. Um, well, that's fine. I did manage to get a shot into the Comet that I wouldn't have been able to if the 5100 had been fully loaded. And the threat to the flank is secure. I can now get back and do what I was originally trying to do in the first place and push up around the flank and give some direct support to Quickie Baby and Ike. Now, they've just been engaging an enemy AMX 5100 and they're telling me over TeamSpeak that he's pulled back to reload. So, there's a T28 prototype up there with him, or he's trying to pull back to reload. And there he goes. And he's managed to retreat around the corner of that building. T28 prototype up there is my next target. I just have to get close enough. Now, with the Carnarvon's great gun depression and very, very strong gun mantlet, even if this T28 prototype had seen me coming, there was a very good chance I'd be able to bounce his return shot. And he's finally realised, and it's, yeah, too slow. There's the 5100, praying for his loader to get his job done. Quickie Baby's just taken a big hit from that Rheinmetall Balsig. 5100's gone, Ike's taken him out. There's Ike just in front of me, he's closing in on the Balsig. I'm going around the other side. The Balsig reloads in time to put a big hit into Ike. And Ike's crying on TeamSpeak. <laughs> help me, Jingles, help me. <laughs> well, with the rate of fire of the Carnarvon, that is not a problem. Quickie Baby was in trouble with that enemy T-34, but he's managed to disengage and conserve his remaining health, and this is an ideal position 
I, I try to go for the tracking shot and keep his gun on the opposite side of that building from me, but with this many of us shooting at him, <laughs> it wasn't really necessary. But I was able to get another shot in and claim the kill, so that's my fourth kill in this game, and it's pretty much over at this point. Um, the enemy team got no chance. T25-2 is gone. There's a Yak Panther 2, but he's at the other end of the map. I'm never going to get there in time. So, skipping ahead to the results, not a spectacular game by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, it's one of those rare games where I actually managed to do more damage in a battle, driving the same tank than Quickie Baby. <laughs> so this automatically makes it onto YouTube. There we go. He he actually I actually beat him on experience as well, although Ike came first on experience earned, but 12 shots, 12 hits, 12 penetrations with the Carnarvon's Type B barrel 20 pounder gun. To be completely fair to Quickie Baby, while I was having fun running around the flank, just face raping all the <laughs> medium tanks and the slow tank destroyers, he was actually doing a proper heavy tank job in the centre of the town, facing off against the T-34, an AMX-15100, and, and another Carnarvon, so... But I don't care, I did more damage than Quickie Baby. Uh. <laughs> so I like the Carnarvon. Funnily enough, that's also why I like the E-100. Tier 10 match this time, obviously, we're all in E100s, and we're on the Hidden Village map. And uh, once again, I'm making every effort to not use premium ammunition wherever possible when I'm driving the E100, just to prove that it's possible to do well in this tank without emptying your pockets at the enemy every time you pull the trigger. I'm not saying that there isn't a time and a place for using the premium ammunition on this tank, there definitely is, but it's not quite as often as you would think. You definitely don't need to find nothing but heat ammo when you're driving the E100. You're going to see at least one example in this match where I probably should have had high explosive anti-tank ammo loaded and instead because I had the armour piercing and the armour piercing ammunition on this 150mm gun has the worst penetration of any tier 10 heavy tank in World of Tanks. If I'd had heat ammo loaded, uh, it was when firing at the front of an IS-7, I would have been able to penetrate and do some damage. As it was, I didn't have it loaded, I didn't have the time to reload heat and so I just ended up not taking the shot. On the other hand, you're going to see another example of a shot where if I had high explosive anti-tank ammunition loaded and I took the shot that I did, it would have done no damage because it would have just been eaten up by the tracks and the spaced side armour of the tank at which I was shooting. And that T-54 is about to have a very, very, very bad day. Uh, Ike, having a very successful first shot fired, has just taken a third of his health off and oh, there goes almost all of the rest of it and... A pretty successful first shot for me as well. <laughs> and if I've had high explosive anti-tank ammunition loaded shooting into the tracks of a T-54 from the side, I guarantee you that would have done no damage. It would have blown his tracks off. Somebody else would have gotten the kill, but I would have pretty much wasted my first shot fired. Quickie baby there, angling his armour just in time to let his uh, tracks take the shot from that E-100. Myself and Ike coming up around. Ike takes a hit. I figure these guys are fired, I'll take a shot. I take a hit in return, but I do a hell of a lot more damage to that 215B than I took in return. I set him on fire, and I probably cost him 20,000 credits. <laughs> that looked like a premium fire extinguisher to me. We've got to keep this momentum going, we have to keep rolling forward. Right now that E100 is panicking. He's looking at his team, they're all falling back. He's alone, he's isolated. I didn't have a shot at the 215B, but even with a crappy penetration of this 150mm gun, I can easily penetrate the side of an E100's turret, and while I was aiming at him, somebody put one right through the side of my tank as well. Left him on low health, come on, somebody finish him off. Bingo, there we go. Now we have to keep the momentum going. The 215B has just seen what's happened to the E100, and he's starting to try to pull back into cover as well. We can't afford to let him get away. I was a bit concerned about the Object 704 on that corner, but he didn't have a direct line of fire, and he's dead anyway, so time to put some damage into this 215B. Cannot afford to let a tank with a gun as dangerous as that pull back, get away, and get into cover. I come around, I'm angled, my side skirts and tracks take that shot, our Waffenträger finishes him off. Keep moving forward, I can now use these rocks as cover, and if I have to, I can always use the wreck of the 215B as cover as well. There's an IS-7 around the corner, he's just fired. I might take a hit from this Carnarvon, but I'll do a hell of a lot more damage to him than he will to me, and as he tries to pull back, he gets obliterated as well. Now, this is the point at which if I did have premium ammunition loaded, I would have been able to do some substantial damage to that IS-7, but he's angled very, very well, side scraping around that corner, and then suddenly E-50Ms pop up on the other flank and start putting flanking fire into us. It's important, 
and Quickie Baby spotted this before I did, that you know when it's safe to push and be aggressive and when you have to look after your health and fall back and wait for the rest of your team because if you have a look at the map, and again, Quickie Baby spotted this long before I did, and he's the one telling me on TeamSpeak, fall back, wait a few seconds because those medium tanks on the opposite corner are about to get some surprise butt sex from the rest of our team. And now is the time to push forward once again. Side shot right into the side of that IS-7. Again, if I'd had high explosive anti-tank loaded, that would have done no damage. His spaced armor and his tracks would have eaten that up. I would have gotten nothing out of it. But right ammunition, right time, right place. And what makes this replay remarkable, at least for me, is that well, you look at how comprehensively the enemy team got its ass handed to them. I mean, we've only lost two tanks and all we have left to kill is their artillery. In this kind of game, when everybody on your team is just kicking ass, it's really, really difficult to do a large amount of damage. So getting a result like this, and this is only a second class mastery badge in the E100, but I managed to do over 4,000 damage, more damage than Quickie Baby, which is always worth a YouTube video of its own. <laughs> Sorry, Quickie Baby, but you're a tough act to follow. Um, and came top on XP end as well. So yeah, I had a really, really good night on Quickie Baby's live stream last night. It's always a pleasure playing with him and Ike. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, folks, take care and I'll catch you next time.